Today, we will explore the fascinating history of the Ookanihira, a renowned Japanese sword celebrated for its exceptional craftsmanship and incredible history. This sword, often referred to as the masterpiece of Japanese horsemanship, has faced challenges that threatened its existence. Yet it stands today as a testament to the perseverance and dedication of those who have protected it. Let's embark on a journey through history to uncover the story of Ookanihira. Ookanihira is a renowned Japanese sword, also known as a tachi, which is believed to have been made during the late Heian period. It was crafted by the master swordsmith Kanihira, who was active during the Heian period. Kanihira, who created O Kanihira, represents the Kopizen school of swordsmiths, and he is known as one of the Kopizen Three Hira, alongside the other master swordsmiths of the same school, Sukihira and Takahira. This exquisite sword was named O Kanihira, meaning Great Kanihira, because it stands out as one of the most exceptional pieces among the swords made by Kanihira. Okanihira is often described as a miracle blade created by Kanihira, a sword so exceptional that even Kanihira himself could never recreate it. In the early Showa period, attempts were made to reproduce Okanihira, but it proved impossible to replicate the strength and lightness of the original sword. Nowadays, when swordsmiths try to make a tachi with the same length and width as Okanihira, the blade becomes too thick in order to maintain its strength, resulting in a weight of over 4.4 pounds. However, Okanihira achieves an impressive weight of only approximately 2.98 pounds by incorporating a thin blade and grooves. Furthermore, the balance of the sword, including the curve of the blade, is truly exquisite, making it easy to swing without feeling heavy. The beauty of the ground metal and the blade pattern also stand out as remarkable features of Ookanihira. Ookanihira has a broad blade and thin cross section, and it features a boar's neck. With a blade length of 35.12 inches, Ookanihira exudes a grandeur reminiscent of the swords made during the Kamakura period, when many battles took place. One of the most notable aspects of this tachi is the long inscription on the tang, which is carved with the phrase Bizen no Kuni Kanihira Saku, made by Kanihira of Bizen Province. Normally, swords made by Kanihira bear only a two character signature, Kanihira. However, this particular sword has a longer inscription, which is believed to be a reflection of Kanihira's immense satisfaction with the final product. When discussing famous Japanese swords, the first names that often come to mind are the Tenka Goken or the Five Swords Under Heaven. However, there is a miraculous sword that rivals the Tenka Goken and it is known as Ookanihira. This miraculous sword was created during the Heian period, a time when technology was not as advanced as it is today. Yet even in the modern age, Ookanihira is highly valued as a national treasure among national treasures. The Tenka Goken consists of five exceptional swords known as Dojigiri Yasutsuna, Mikazuki Munechika, Onimaru Kunitsuna, Odenta Mitsuyo, and Juzumaru Tsunetsugu. These five swords are considered the greatest masterpieces among all Japanese swords. The Tenkagoken are swords that were owned by famous historical figures, such as Toyotomi Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu. These swords are also known for their unique and mysterious origins, making them particularly valuable among national treasures. Along with the Tenka Goken's Dojigiri Yasutsuna, there is Ookanihira, which is celebrated as the Dojigiri of the East and the Ookanihira of the West. Ookanihira is known as the greatest masterpiece among all existing Japanese swords. One of its distinctive features is that its history is unclear and there is very little information about it. Okanihira is known for its mysterious origins and the lack of available information. However, what we do know is that its first known owner was Ikeda Terumasa. 
It is said that Terumasa either received the sword as a gift from Toyotomi Hideyoshi or acquired it from another source. Before Terumasa's ownership, it is speculated that Okanihira may have been dedicated to a shrine or temple, but the truth remains unknown. Ikeda Terumasa was a prominent warlord active during the Azuchi Momoyama period, transitioning into the early Edo period. He served as a retainer under the three great unifiers of Japan, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. Terumasa was highly regarded by each of these leaders for his skill as a warrior. Ultimately, his family domain grew to encompass 920,000 koku, making the Ikeda clan the largest daimyo family in Western Japan. Terumasa is also known as the first lord of the Himeji domain and is credited for the extensive renovation of Himeji castle, transforming it into the magnificent structure it is today. Despite Terumasa's wealth and influence, he was known for his indifference towards extravagant riches and treasures. He valued his retainers above all else. However, Okanihira was an exception to this attitude. Terumasa famously remarked that the sword was irreplaceable even for a country, and is said to have paid a substantial sum to acquire it. In the Ikeda family, Okanihira was displayed alongside armor every new year and passed it down through generations as a treasured sword. The Ikeda family considered Okanihira a priceless heirloom refusing even the request of Emperor Meiji to view the sword, suggesting that he should come to Okayama instead. In 1936, when the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology requested the sword for appraisal as a former national treasure, the Ikeda family declined, adhering to their tradition of not allowing Okanihira outside their gates. After World War II, there is a story that reveals the value of Okanihira as the greatest masterpiece among Japanese swords. General Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers, SCAP, personally requested the Ikeda family to give him the Okanihira. However, the Ikeda family firmly refused, stating they would only consider it if they could exchange it for the Statue of Liberty. Later on, Okanihira faced a crisis of survival. At that time, SCAP decided to confiscate all Japanese weapons, including swords. Confiscated swords were either taken out of Japan or destroyed. Suddenly, the occupying forces in Okayama issued an order to the Ikeda family to surrender all of their swords. In a panic, the Ikeda family decided to do whatever it took to save the Okanihira. With the help of Lieutenant Colonel Caldwell, a military police commander with a deep understanding and appreciation for Japanese swords, the Ikeda family managed to transport their swords, including the Okanihira, to the Ueno Museum, now the Tokyo National Museum, in Tokyo by train. This way, the swords were saved from confiscation. Lieutenant Colonel Caldwell, who was in charge of confiscating swords, listened to the appeals of the Japanese side with enthusiasm and showed deep understanding. He worked hard to resolve the issue and thanks to his efforts, many Japanese swords were saved. He is a hero in the world of Japanese swords. Okanihira, which survived this crisis, was designated as a national treasure in 1951. In 1967, the Ministry of Education, Science and Culture of Japan purchased the Okanihira from the Ikeda family for 65 million yen. If we convert this to today's value, it's approximately 270 million yen, which is about four times the original price. It is an extraordinary price worthy of the greatest Japanese sword. The Okanihira is now owned by the Tokyo National Museum, and the actual sword is exhibited to the public once every few years. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of the Okanihira, a truly remarkable sword that stands at the pinnacle of Japanese swordsmithing. From its creation to its significance throughout history, the Okanihira has left an indelible mark on the world of sword craftsmanship. 
We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara.